Hi, everyone. Welcome to the sunny side of San Diego. My name is Vinny and my co-host over here. Karini. Karini. All right. So we are going to go over, um, I guess, embrace the chaos. I mean, that's a, a good term of fighting through the pain uh, that if you listen to our podcast, we talk about a lot. And uh, I mean, diamonds are made uh, under pressure. I think that's something that most of us can can understand. But Michael, you know, this was the, the topic that you wanted to really to jump on. So why don't you take it away? Oh, right on the spot there. See, see, I'm embracing the chaos right now. Sometimes you just get thrown into the fire. I think that too often times people want to wait until they feel that they're ready. But we're never really ready for anything. And so I think that sometimes you just have to embrace that moment, fall into the moment, take the step off the cliff and just take in everything that comes with that. And I think that you will figure things out along the way. And I think that the more that you do that, the better conditioned you are to managing that in the future. And I think that people that have dealt with a lot of trauma and chaos in their lives in the past, even though it may seem like something that is a, a problem in some capacities or a negative, it also has a positive because every negative has a positive, every positive has a negative. And for me personally, it has made me, even though I don't like to, even though I like homeostasis, it has made it so that I can adapt and pick myself up over and over again. And so once you do it a number of times, falling down doesn't hurt as much because you know that you can pick yourself up. And so you know that you're going to be okay. You have the comfort of knowing that, hey, even when it's chaotic, I can not only survive, but I can thrive. I think there's finding a method, like the idea of method to your madness, right? It's finding a schedule, finding a routine, finding something in the chaos that you can be consistent with. I mean, I think that's, I think the, the, the biggest thing you're going to, I mean, there's so much chaos that's been going on right now. The chaos of, okay, well, well, we can't do this now. Okay. Now, now the rules change. You can't do that now. Okay. We can't do that now. But what, what has been consistent throughout the time? I mean, what can you do throughout the time? I mean, you can wake up, I mean, read a book. You can wake up, do an affirmation. You can wake up and do, I mean, do a, a, do a workout, do some sort of workout, whatever it might be. Now you're having some kind of routine to the chaos. And then slowly, okay, now what, what chaos, what am I dealing with today? How can I get this resolved? But finding a routine that you can do in the morning to wake yourself up and add on top of it. I mean, that's, I think, the, the, the biggest thing during chaos. I mean... If you were, I mean, if, if you if, if you're sitting in a, standing in a circle, I know this is an analogy that might not fully ring true, but you're sitting you're sitting in a circle, and, and you're getting balls thrown at you, right? Over time, you're gonna start feel you're gonna start figuring out that there might be some kind of balance to those balls of of when they're coming, when that one's coming, how fast they're coming, if you can duck around them, you start understanding some kind of um, consistency to that chaos. And I think it's the same thing with what's going on, right? Where you're trying to find some kind of consistency with this chaos. You're trying to find out some kind of thing that you can do yourself, something, some kind of mindset you can do during this, this chaotic time and allow yourself to, to grow from it and figure out, okay, well, what can I learn from this chaos? How can I get better from this chaos? If I ever get into this situation again, what can I do differently? Yes, and I think it has seemed like one of the few things that has been consistent for the past year has been the chaos. It's been probably the only thing that's been consistent for the most part. And I think that it's made it difficult for people to establish plans. Uh, I'm a planner. I like to, as you said, have a schedule, have a formula for success. And when the rules are constantly being changed, it shifts the formula. It doesn't allow it to get grounded. And so at that point, uh, I have to shift into a different mode, a, a fight or flight mode, a different version of myself that uh, does quite well, but is not a comfortable version of myself. And so I think that we have to sometimes get comfortable being uncomfortable. And that's one of the reasons that I do a lot of the things that I do. And even though I fell off this year and had a lot of struggles, I tried to get back to it. And I think that the reason I was able to get back to it was because of the work that I put in in the past. And so all the runs that I do, the runs in the rain, two days, the workouts, 
uh, people always say, well, I don't, I don't get why you do that. You don't even do a sport or anything like that. No, but you do it for life. You're training for life. You're training to condition yourself to adapt to whatever struggles may come your way to be a little bit stronger mentally, physically, emotionally, to be a little bit better, to be a little more equipped to hold on a little bit longer, to take another breath when you feel like you don't have one in you. Oh, well, I also think too, I mean, as you age, right, you start realizing that age is just a number. I mean, you start seeing people, one person that's 60, another person that's 60, and you start seeing the difference in how their body's kept. You start seeing- I'll be honest, seeing, my body feels like it's like 75 sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there there's people that are, are, are overweight, I mean, obese, I mean, they're, you know, I mean, let's say 40s, I mean, 45. And then you see other people that are in their 80s and they're just like still hiking every day. I mean, they're keeping their body active. And it's understanding that, okay, well, what can I, and reality is, is, is what you do with your workout, with your routine is, is you're still going to die. I mean, we often know that there is going to be a point in time that we're going to die. Yet how you live your life, right, and the quality of life can be different from one person to the next person. So the stuff you're doing right now, I mean, is is building a better roadmap to that end of life, to that basically finish line. I mean, that's that's the way I look at when I look at fitness. Do I want to be that person that's basically, you know, can't can't touch my toes, can't basically walk up the stairs? Hey, I can't do those things. Those things hurt me. <laughs> you know, I mean, do 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 I want to do I want to give myself the best chance to appreciate the life I have and. I think when you when you think about okay, well, should I do this extra push up? Should I not do this? Oh, what's it for? What is it for? Oh, it's it's for me. It's for future me. If I'm if I'm six years old and I'm looking at my myself when I'm in my thirties and saying, hey, why did you not go the extra mile? Why did you not work out? You know, I'm doing it for that person. Yeah, it definitely helps the confidence and the self esteem and to to build a better base. And I think that again, going back to what I was saying earlier. By building a better base for yourself, it makes you have a foundation that can hold a little bit more weight, that can hold a little bit more struggle, that can hold a little bit more chaos. And so there's going to be times that you're broken down, but one of the hardest lessons that I've had in recent years is that you can not always be at peak performance. You can't always be at your best. So you put in the work, and there's going to be times that it regresses and goes backwards. But if you put in all the work, and you reach a certain level, you reach an apex, a pinnacle point, your regression from that stage is not going to be as detrimental or as diminished as it would be if you were 10, 20, 30 steps behind that. Yeah, I mean, uh, no, I agree. And so I mean, it's embracing the chaos, understanding what you're, what you're working with, what you're dealing with, what you're doing and how you can adapt, how you can grow, how you can get stronger from today. I mean, we've talked about it multiple times, and there's so many businesses that are hurting right now, yet there's also a lot of businesses that are thriving. I mean, they found a niche to the market. I mean, there's people, I mean, I have a client that, I mean, he works in one totally different industry, and he's adapted now to do a hand sanitizer. And so he's been selling hand sanitizer, and making I mean great amount of money. He he adapted to the chaos. He found out his 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 core business wasn't doing the greatest with everything going on. And he found a way to adapt. I mean, there's people that are building masks now and selling masks out there. I mean, with designs on it. I mean, they're finding ways in this chaos how to how to thrive. And I mean, there's always going to be an excuse. There's always going to be an excuse. Some excuse is bigger than others. And finding out, okay, well, how can I push past this excuse? How can I work past this and make myself stronger and make myself better tomorrow? See, now those people, they're completely shifting lanes. Now me, I'm on a particular road where I know who I am. I know what I want to do. And I may not be able to do it the way that I want to, but I'm going to stay on my lane. I may just shift or pivot a little bit, but wow, those people just really jump in and, and switch into a different area. But for me, and, and I think for a lot of people, life is in a sense a scale of balances and in a time where there's chaos what we then seek or perhaps overseek is control or stability 
So I think a lot of people right now uh, with uh, promises being thrown out there and ideas, a lot of people are willing to give up certain things, certain liberties uh, under the guise of comfort or security or stability. And I remember being behind a car the other day that said something along the lines of, and I'm paraphrasing the quote, something along the lines of those that would give up uh, freedom and liberty for temporary comfort or security uh, desire, deserve neither. But uh, I know for me, being somebody that likes homeostasis, anytime I'm in a state of chaos, my initial response is always to seek control, to overseek control. And that tends to pose problems for me because it's just not there. It's like you have a relationship that's failing. And so you start trying to hold on to it even tighter than you were before. And then you just start squeezing it and you start suffocating it. And so I think that it's, it wasn't until I embraced the chaos of this time that I started to move into a, a healthier, better place because trying to hold on to the control that I was losing grasp of was just making everything more neurotic and anxiety ridden. And it wasn't until I said, you know what? You're not going to be able to do anything about this. At some point, you just got to put your hands up and go with the ride. You can try to fight it. You can try to get off, but you can't disembark when the thing's plummeting. So you just got to kind of roll with it and wait for it to, to spin up and then decide what decision to make from there. And in embracing the chaos and accepting what I couldn't change and changing what I could, that's what really put me on a platform or in a position to kind of move forward and to, to get through this because for a while it was just everything was going in the wrong direction for me behind the scenes during this pandemic. Yeah, I mean, I think that's sometimes how it feels. I mean, we, we, we try to be careful of what we show to the outside world, right? And we're like, we have to be strong. We have to be, I mean, uh, I mean strong because there's, I mean, you have a lot of followers. I mean, I have a lot of followers that basically they look, they look at us and, and they go, oh, well, look what they're doing. Look what they're doing. And you want to be strong for those people. And you're inside, you're like, oh, my gosh, man, what am I doing? Am I, am I a failure? Am I... I mean, why is everything falling apart? And then you take a step back, like you said, and relax for a second and go, okay, well, how can I adapt to this? How can I be stronger? How can I be better? How can I, how can I work through this? How can I go with the flow? And it's, you find a way to adapt. I think sometimes though, being more raw or vulnerable in that and sharing the struggle humanizes you in, in some capacity, but I think it also helps people to recognize, Hey, I relate to this person because I don't feel like I have my shit together all the time or I don't feel like I'm perfect or I feel like I'm failing or like I'm falling. So then when you're somebody that they do often perceive as successful or doing well, and then you show them this other side, it makes them think, Hey, maybe that is tangible. Maybe that's something that could be palpable. Maybe that's possible because yeah, it's it for real yeah. then. It's, but I think that so often, yeah, we do look at people, that only show us one side of things and don't show the full gamut or the full spectrum of everything that's going on. And the truth is, is that the full spectrum, sometimes the back end, the dark end, the shady end of the spectrum is what really shapes us and allows us to appreciate the light that we see on the other end of the spectrum. I mean, I agree. I mean, in my industry, I think it's, it's even more so. I mean, it's shiny objects, shiny properties, shiny people, how great they are. I mean, we see that all the time. I mean, I think it's, it's definitely more of a rarity, uh, a person in my in my sector uh, having a podcast like this with with uh, with someone like you, where we kind of go over the struggles, we go over trying to get some kind of a positive message out there. I mean, it's um, I mean, I look at it, it's it's the ability just to be real, to be who you are, and I think the day that I have to that if I ever felt that I was being fake, that I would just wouldn't want to be there. I don't want to kick myself in the butt. And right? it's just like, we have to be real. We have to be uh, who we are. And some people are going to appreciate it. Other people are going to want that shiny object. Other people are going to want that person that's, that's um, given a false like narrative out there. Yet, if that's who you're looking for, I mean, that's not who I am. I think in, in being real too, sometimes you actually feel fake. And I know that I've experienced that myself where sometimes I feel like, Hey, I don't really feel like this, but it's because in, in being honest, 
I have pivots and shifts in, in what I'm feeling. So I'm open-minded and self-aware in the sense that I feel different things at different times. So when I feel a different way at a later time, it makes me think, oh, look, was I really this the way that I was feeling before? And so with that shift comes this sense or the existential internal question of, hey, was I really that before? Or is that really who I am or which version am I truly? And the honest answer is that we are different things at different times for different reasons in different capacities. Yeah, I agree. Well, I mean, if you're listening right now, or the people that are listening right now, I mean, tell us what what are you doing? What are you doing to adapt? What's your chaos? What what is what's your struggle? What's your what's something that you're working through trying to get better or or have gotten better throughout this this whole process? I mean, we'd love to hear your feedback. Please reach out. Um, any last words, Michael? I think that uh, in embracing the chaos, what that could mean for some of you is it could mean dumping some of the chaos. It could mean dumping the crappy job, the crappy relationship, something that wasn't meant for you, and embracing the chaos in the sense of you let that go, that thing that's harming you or holding you back, because you don't know what's going to happen anyway. So, hey, what better time to just dive into the fire than right now and move forward and see where you could potentially go? Because you never really know where you could go until you take that first step on this journey. And we're having a new year. New year's upon us. So uh, not that I am a subscriber to the new year, new you mentality, but if that helps you, if that gives you the little bit of comfort you need to take that first step, then, hey, take it. Yeah. Once you understand that you're worth it, everything else will be easier. Have a great one, guys. Please subscribe. Please share and follow us on this platform and all the other platforms. Thanks, everyone.